Welcome on in. WIP Daily, Joe Giglio with you. Appreciate everyone listening, subscribing, and following the podcast. Of course, our YouTube page, 94 WIP. Check it out. Subscribe. Follow us there, and uh, you'll get a ton. WIP stuff right from the air, segments, interviews. Of course, the other podcast we do at WIP, Clap Your Hands at Go Birds and High Hopes. Check it out there, the 94 WIP YouTube page. And when we are on YouTube, Tucker joins me, as he will in a few minutes, to discuss the big topic of the day. And I feel like today's conversation is something that's kind of underlying. It's like bubbling under the surface with some Eagles issues, obviously off the game on Sunday. The Eagles just played really poorly, as, as we've discussed all week. They got smacked by the Niners in every single way. And the big focus right now is on their defense, as it should be, because the Eagles defense is just not good enough right now to win a championship or even you know really make you think they can win a championship. They got to fix that and come way closer to the middle of the pack than the bottom third or bottom, depending on the category you look at. But the underlying bubbling issue with the Eagles has been really the offense. And I, I'd say it's been all year, but certainly they have enough points per game and they have enough games where they put points on the board and have had big second halves that you kind of just can, can move it aside a little bit and not have it such top of mind. But we've all watched the same team all year, and it just feels like offense is harder for them this year than it was last year. Last year, it felt so easy. They had an identity. I was watching last night NFL Live, and it was uh, Mina Kimes and, and Dan Rolofsky and, and, and Marcus Spears, and they were discussing the Eagles and what's going on with their offense right now. What's going on with Jalen Hurts, who I know is still right up near the top in NFL MVP odds. He's, I think, third. Uh, you know, Purdy and Prescott are tied for first, and then, then there's Jalen Hurts. And he's got a lot of touchdowns, and they have the best record. And he's been clutch. You know, Jalen Hurts has ab- absolutely been clutch. But I I haven't felt, and I've said this in a lot of our episodes here, that he's been an MVP by the standard we're used to um, in terms of efficiency, in terms of just snap-to-snap excellence. I haven't felt that from him this year. The whole thing has felt more choppy for the Eagles offense. And, and let's dive into why. Like, what is going on here? A couple of things stood out to me watching NFL Live last night. And it's something one actually one thing in particular, Marcus Spears said they've lost their identity on offense. And we talked this a little bit on the midday show yesterday. Their identity on offense last year was physicality and the RPO. And and they had a combination of they could out physical you with AJ Brown, Jalen Hurts, who's a very physical quarterback as a runner and as a thrower. I mean, just he's a physical player that's tough to bring down. And their offensive line. And then they outsmarted you or made you, you know, had to make quick decisions similar to Kyle Shanahan, different packaging of offense, but similar. Right? Kyle Shanahan, he puts teams in blunders because they have no idea where the guys are going, where they're supposed to be going, what their assignment is. And all of a sudden, there's George Kittle wide open by 15 yards. There's Debo wide open. Like that's what, what makes Shanahan one of the best play callers in the league, maybe ever. That, that's how good he is. And last year with the Eagles, obviously Shane Steichen was the one calling plays and the RPO was more effective. They were able to do that to teams because the ride and decide, the Jalen Hurts RPO, it froze the second level. They had to wait. It gave them the extra step. And it felt like last year it was just quick and decisive. Hand the ball off, keep it yourself, Jalen, to run or throw it behind you know, the linebacker that's like frozen, doesn't know what to do there for a slant or an in route or whatever the play was easy plays or identify the one-on-one pull the ball back and go down the field one-on-one and none of that stuff is is easy this year especially the last four five six weeks you know in the last three games the eagles offense is averaging less than seven yards per game in the first half it is just it's really hard to imagine winning that way throughout the postseason and I'll, i'll put it this way go look at the first half scoring numbers this season for san francisco for dallas and for detroit what we are seeing right now, if it doesn't change, is I can almost guarantee you the Eagles will be losing at the half in the divisional round and and or the championship game. So to get to the Super Bowl, they're going to have to come back in both games. I mean, that that's that's where we're trending right now. Now, will they be the one seed, the two? Will they get to play a, you know the Rams in the first round? I, I don't know. I mean, that, that might be a different kind of atmosphere. But I'm talking about the divisional round on. But there's four top teams in the NFC. I think Green Bay is, is trending really – high up right now and maybe they could crack that group by the end of the season but the four teams we've discussed all year the eagles the 49ers the cowboys the lions the other three teams put up points in the first half to try to 21 on the board early last week in new orleans dallas is putting up like it feels like 19 points a game 18 points a game in the first half lately they're just scoring at will and we saw that what the 49ers able to do when they get going so we have teams that come out with smart game plans come out and they jump on teams early so 
if the Eagles are going to do this and they're going to get back to a Super Bowl, the, the way this is trending, they're going to have to come back in games. And again, it's fun. They did it against Buffalo. They did it against Kansas City. But that's a tough way to live. And it is tough when your defense can't get off the field. So it's like, hey, guys, you better get stops in the second half. Get us the ball back. But they don't get off the field. So this all works in concert together. A couple of things are standing out to me, just numbers-wise, and we'll kind of dive into more of the whys here. I, I really believe Jalen Hurts is – not inability, but his diminished ability as a runner is impacting everything here with this offense. It was like the cheat code last year because defenses had to respect that he could keep it and run. And he's just not as much this year. So this season, Jalen Hurts, 121 rushes for 430 yards. Through this number of games last year, he had 609 rushing yards on 11 more carries. So the carries are similar, but the impact is way down. He was at 430 yards last year. Uh, he's at 430 yards this year total, which is less than four yards per carry. And last year he was at 609 over four yards per carry. It's it's just it's a drastic difference. I mean, think about running backs. If I told you one guy's averaging close to five yards a carry, one guy's averaging less than four, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna be as afraid if one guy versus the other. Teams are just not as afraid. And let's not forget a lot of these rushes or a good bulk of them are tush pushes. You know, I, I thought Jalen last year was way more willing to run through the tackles, way more willing to run. And there's reason for it. Obviously, he's had a knee issue, and it's changed his game. It's changed the Eagles game. But it's made it harder on offense. So number one is, is the Jalen Hurts thing. I don't think teams are respecting the RPO. And then you look at the result of this. Yards per play this year, they're 13th in the NFL. They're, they're closer to a middle-of-the-pack offense, and they are a top-five offense. Yards per rush this year, including Jalen, but all the running backs, they're 19th. Sack percentage, they're 21st. The quarterback's holding the ball too long. I mean, last week it was over and over and over again, and I haven't done this in a long time, sitting there in front of my TV saying, get rid of the ball, get rid of the ball. I think as, as fans, you know, especially those of us that watch football for a long time, we have like this clock in our head. I don't have to look at the clock on the screen. I, you just feel it. Like you got to get rid of the football. Something bad's going to happen. If you don't, and it happened a couple times last week when he slipped and unnecessary sacks. So I think the Jalen Hurts knee issue is impacting things. I, I think for this offense to be at its best, he needs to be able to run because although he's made strides and he's had some good games, I still don't look at him like I do, you know, a guy, a Patrick Mahomes, a, a Joe Burrow, a Matthew Stafford, who I will say, if he doesn't move the entire game, he can just beat you with his arm from the pocket. That's not. That's not yet Jalen Hurts. Now, he's had some of those games, but I don't think week to week that's the way the Eagles offense is set up. It's the way he is at his best. It's just they need his legs. And right now they're not there, and it's complicated things. The other thing is obviously the Dallas Goddard injury hurts things, and they got to start finding answers earlier in downs because if they don't, like this idea that let's just wait for Jalen Hurts to like point this way, point that way. Like the Alameda Zacchaeus touchdown a few weeks ago, it's Buffalo. Awesome, awesome moment. That's not sustainable. Like that's not sustainable offense for the team. It, it's almost you know backyard football. Last year it was schemed. It was designed. It was we're smarter than you and we're more physical than you. And this year they're not more physical because they, I think they've lost some physicality because their quarterback doesn't run as much and doesn't want to, understandably. And they've lost that that element where they could outsmart teams, where they could get guys wide open. You know, other than. Devontae crossing routes, you know, where Jalen waits and waits and waits. And eventually Devontae goes across the field and, and he's kind of open before he gets out of bounds. Is anyone really open on the Eagles ever? It doesn't feel that way. So, and I'm interested what Tucker thinks about all of this. But moving forward here, this now to me, it's two things. One, can and is Jalen Hurts willing to run more with this knee as he moves forward? Or is that just out for the season? And if it's out, can Nick Sirianni, and I'm going to put it on Sirianni more than Brian Johnson, because everyone tells me it's, it's still Sirianni's offense. He designs it. He's there, all that. Can he reconfigure some stuff? Can he adjust? Can he change something they're doing? Because otherwise, I don't know how they're going to be more efficient on offense. Like they'll have games where they score 26, 27, 28, because they have really good players. And A.J. Brown could just take a slant and go 40 yards. And Devontae Smith wins at the line of scrimmage and wins his routes you know, more than he does it. And Jalen Hurts, when he has time and he is comfortable, is a very accurate and, and I think, on-time kind of thrower. So they'll score some points. 
But when push comes to shove, is it going to be choppy? And can they find a way early in games to score more? Because, you know, someone sent me a message today saying, do I think the defense could figure it out this year? And my honest response is probably not. They're not very good in the back seven. Their corners aren't very aren't great. Their safeties are very up and down. Their linebackers flat out stink. We'll see what Shaq Leonard does when he gets here. But the only way this defense works is if they have a lead because their strength is up front. And if they could get after the quarterback, you know, up 14 nothing, it's way different than being down. So I, I do think, yeah, this thing could work. They could still get to the Super Bowl. They could change this. They could get back to the perch that people felt like they were a week ago as the best team in the league. Some people did. But they need to get ahead in games. The offense actually kind of has to help the defense because if you leave them to their own devices, the defense is not getting off the field. Tucker, what are you thinking with the offense? It, the, the numbers, in some cases, like yard, points per game, it's like they're still really good, but it hasn't been the same this season. It hasn't felt easy, right? And that was the thing I felt last year. I was watching them. It just it, it made sense. It, it, everything Jalen Hurts and, and Shane Steichen kind of cooked up, it, it looked easy. And watching other teams around the NFL – I almost it, it felt painful, like watching a team like the Carolina Panthers try and, you know, pull offense out of that team. It didn't work. And then you go and watch the Eagles and, you know, they, they just made it seem like they're playing a different sport than everybody else. And right now through this season, you're right. I think they're fourth in, in points scored this year. Their points per drive are real up. They're second in yards per drive. Like they, they've been fairly efficient. But I think for me, there are a couple of things that, that really stand out. And the first is. They haven't been good on first down. They haven't been good at staying ahead of the chains. I mean, they're second in rushing attempts this season. They're fourth in, in rushing yards as a team this season. They have three guys over 200 rushing yards so far in, in Hertz, uh, Swift, and Gainwell. But on first down, they average 1.5 yards per carry uh, against the, the 49ers on Sunday. They're, they're 25th in the NFL in yards per play on four, first down. Like, they're with the Commanders and the Panthers and – the Raiders, like they're in that neighborhood. They're not with Buffalo and they're not with Miami and they're not with the teams that we think they should be with on first down. They're, they're terribly inefficient. And, you know, when you, you, you watch them play kind of makes sense. I mean, it, it happened a lot on Sunday. Like they've been great on third down all year. I think they're third and in, in third down efficiency this season, but they're facing third and eight a lot or, or third and seven a lot because you run for two yards on first down, you throw an incomplete pass on second down. And then all of a sudden you're stuck at, at third and eight. And, Jalen Hurts has been a magician at that. It reminds me a lot of Carson Wentz in 2017, where that team wasn't necessarily great on first down, but his ability to keep the chains moving on, on third down really kept that team and that offense, you know, clicking and, and on the field. And so far from what we've seen, I just, when you run into a good team, like we saw against the 49ers on Sunday, even though I think they converted like seven of their 15 third down attempts, you can't have third and eight on every possession. It's just not going to work against a defense that good. And I just – I think the scheme is kind of stale right now. Like you mentioned, like, how often do you see wide receiver running wide open, right? Like the big plays aren't schemed up. A lot of the Eagles' big plays are simply we have better guys than you do and we're going to make it work, right? It's A.J. Brown beating single coverage. Just Devontae Smith running across the field and outrunning a number two cornerback. It's DeAndre Swift making two or three guys miss and then scampering for 35 yards. It's never, oh, my God, how did that guy get this wide open because – so far, that just hasn't happened. It's really just been a matter of our man is going to beat your man one-on-one, -on -one, and that's how it is. And I just think it's been really difficult for this team to pick up big plays or scheme up big plays against you know some of these defenses playing too high safeties against them. Yeah, I agree. It, it's been harder. Everything's been harder. And I, I don't have the answer. This is Brian Johnson's job. It's Nick Sirianni's job, specifically Sirianni. But one thing I keep thinking about, and this is all dependent on Jalen Hurts' legs and how he feels and how they think he feels. But I, I think it would make a difference if they started a game, or obviously very early in the game, maybe not the first play, to run an RPO and he keeps the ball and runs. Like that threat feels like it's gone from the offense. That teams know, like he'll scramble and he'll run if he's being chased from behind and he'll get his four or five or six or seven yards on a certain play. But the idea that he will keep it on the RPO and run off tackle like he did very often last year and obviously in 2021 it just feels so out of the offense right now i think teams are not respecting it it changed the way they're playing coverage in the back end it changed the way their linebackers are are you know reacting to the run early it's why i think they couldn't run the football on first down against the 49ers they have to put that threat back in that threat last year was kind of the crux of the offense jalen hurts his legs and his accuracy down the field 
That was the offense. Timing and accuracy and power football. And right now, they don't have any of those things. It's just like Big Tucker said it well. They have better players than most teams. So just just throw it up and we'll find a way to get three touchdowns a game. That's not going to win the Super Bowl. If they're going to win the Super Bowl, they need a more efficient and schemed up offense. The defense is this team's biggest problem, but the offense can help the defense by playing better, staying on the field, and getting leads. Appreciate everyone listening, subscribing, and following WIP Daily. We'll talk soon.